S&P Global is a um, provider of benchmarks, information, indices, and uh, general uh, financial service data uh, related to the fixed income and equity markets. I'm in S&P Global Ratings, so uh, my main role is in the credit rating analysis world. Uh, but within that, uh, I head up our environmental and climate risk research function across all of corporate and infrastructure ratings. So I'm very focused on the environment and very focused on climate change and how it impacts risk for investors. Clearly, um, you know, with uh, climate change having so much of a profound effect already uh, on uh, companies' assets, uh, and on also on the transition towards a decarbonized uh, economy, uh, investors are very concerned about protecting uh, their assets, protecting their investments, uh, and also the impact going forward. You know, there's been a, a dramatic change already that we've seen in terms of the uh, risks posed by climate change and environmental issues, uh, and we expect that just to continue more going forward as climate change increases and the frequency and severity of, of events and extreme weather events starts to really have a, uh, a potential uh, hard hit on uh, investors' portfolios. Our prime function is to provide credit ratings, so our credit ratings already incorporate um, to a very large degree the impact that environmental and climate risk has on the ability of a company or uh, a bank, for example, to repay its debts. Uh, but we're also, uh, at the moment, uh, uh, developing new tools and new products to provide further transparency to the investment community. Uh, for example, we've uh, uh, put out for consultation a new tool to look at green bonds and evaluate the environmental impact of green bonds. Uh, and we're also looking at doing an assessment of ESG, environmental social and governance, so that allows investors to see how ESG risks in, in particular affect a company and to have those risks disaggregated from the more holistic uh, credit risk that we have within our rating. A clear example of uh, what we've seen uh, in terms of corporate uh, ratings is over the past two years um, there's been a, a number of downgrades and negative rating actions related to environment and climate risk and we expect that to continue uh, increasing. So uh, it's, you know, what we see that investors want is a, a, a clear uh, disaggregation, more transparency of those risks uh, and so that they can then focus on in on that, they can then benchmark which companies and which investments they, they wish to uh, uh, increase their allocation to or divest from. Uh, and that's the kind of uh, value we think we're providing through our ratings, tools and benchmarks. From my point of view, uh, we believe um, infrastructure and sustainable development is the main uh, target uh, for us in terms of uh, future investment in uh, decarbonizing the economy, be it energy, be it transport, be it uh, uh, um, real estate. Those are the big areas that we see uh, investment in the trillions needed to, uh, to move towards a more sustainable world. And that clearly you know, means that infrastructure investors who are very eager to increase their allocation in that asset class are looking to beyond the sort of like the yield but also to the long-term risk perspectives. So we're seeing this fundamental shift in investor horizons from short-term focus to long-term risk assessment. And we believe that's something which we need to focus on as well. And in fact, our ESG assessment product does divide sort of the, the time horizon between medium and long-term, and clearly because investors are now more interested in that. So that, that's a good example how we see things changing. Mm -hmm.